Hello everyone! Welcome to a long-awaited video. Today we will be answering some questions we've gotten in the comments over like the entirety of our program. I'm so excited. We've been teasing y'all about this for the past like three months, but it's finally coming out. So we hope you guys enjoy. Our first question is, what were our roles and locations? My role was entertainment costuming at Hollywood Studios. And my role was quick service food and bev front of house at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe. Our next question was, what was our program length? Our program length was about four months. We were January 29th through May 30th. Originally, actually, we were through May 16th, but we extended to May 30th. This is probably the question we get asked the most out of everything. It is, how did we have the cats? So as y'all know, we had two cats there. They're both Lauren's cats, Astra and Biscuit. Basically, before I even decided to go to Disney, my cats were registered as emotional support animals. So both of them are my ESAs. And I just went through the Flamingo website. There's a little part where you can submit requests for accommodations. And so I just put in that I have two emotional support animals and I need to bring them, so. Okay, so next we're gonna answer a few questions about Flamingo. The first one is, what was our rent? We were in a two by two, so our rent was $202 per week. This includes absolutely everything. We had Wi-Fi, utilities, water, rent itself. Everything was included in that $202 a week. Okay, and the next question is, what was the rent payment process? It just comes out directly from your paycheck. Like, you never even see the money. Next is how do room assignments work? So basically with the room assignments, it's completely randomized. You don't get a say at all. You're just put in a space. That includes whether or not you got two by two, four by two, or four by four. You don't get a choice. You put your preference obviously, but most people end up in two by twos. It doesn't really matter what preference you put. So you're just assigned your unit, your room, and your bed space. They just let you know before moving day and that's where you go. The next question is, do your roommates have the same move in and out days as you? Not all of your roommates will. And if you don't link with anybody, there's a good chance that like none of you are gonna have the same date. In order to link with someone, you're required to have the same dates. So just make sure to have that in mind when you're linking with someone. And you can also only link with one person and you're not necessarily gonna share a room with them. So just keep that in mind as well. But other than who you link with, not gonna be the same dates necessarily. And next we're gonna answer some room specific questions. So we got asked a few questions about where certain things were from. So I'll just get those out of the way. Someone asked, where did we get our string lights? Those came from Walmart, but it was all the way back in like 2017. So they probably do not yeah, have those anymore. Definitely don't exist anymore. <laughs> and then someone asked where we got our prints. So if you guys watched our room tour video, we had four prints above our beds each and then some in the bathroom. All of those actually came out of a poster calendar that we got from Cast Connections, which was a 2023 poster calendar. So unfortunately you won't be able to purchase that anymore, I'm assuming. We found it near the beginning of our program in like February probably. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance if you go to Cast Connection, it's still gonna be there, but I can't say for sure. Okay, so our next question is, is the bed partition movable? So as I'm sure anyone watching this knows, there's a little divider in between the beds in a two by two. Basically, short answer, no. Long answer, you can move the divider, but it's attached to the headboards. So it's like, you'd have to move the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can't just like slide that out and scoot it away. You could always, take it apart, damage Disney property, and take away the divider. Or maybe move the bed around, I guess, because the bed frame isn't attached to the divider, but personally, I'm not gonna yeah. recommend that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with no, not movable, unfortunately. Is What is our pay? Ours was different, actually. Mine was $16 an hour, which is just the base pay that most people are gonna be getting during the DCP. And I was paid $16.75, which is only for the people who work food and bev in Magic Kingdom. 
So working there, you get 75 cents extra. Housekeepers, they make more. They make um, a few dollars more, I think. And then if you're a performer, which obviously has different requirements, you have to audition for that separately and everything, you also get paid more for that. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that has different pay, but I know of those three do get paid more. But for the most part, $16 an hour. The next question is, do we get a discount and how much? Yes, we do get a discount. The amount changes a lot. Like we were only there for about four months and it changed a lot even during our program. When we got there, the holiday discount was still going on and that was 40%. Then it cut down to 20%, which is the standard discount. And it was like that for a while. And then by the time we left, it had gone up to 50% off because they had a special summer thing going. I don't know if they do that every year, but they did that while we were there. One thing about the discounts is that it doesn't usually work on restaurants. For the most part, it's only for merchandise that you get the discount. And they do randomly have like pop-up discounts for certain restaurants. Like at one part during our program, they had a list of like 10 or so table service restaurants that had discounts ranging between like 20 and 50%. So random stuff like that can happen as well, but that's not within the typical cast discount that we get. Okay, so our next question is how do the three day park tickets work? So if you guys watched our move in week vlog, we talked a little bit about how we got three free park tickets before traditions. Basically, that's just what that is. The day after move-in day, they set a time for you to come up to the office and they load three free tickets onto your My Disney Experience app so that you can go into the park because there are a few days between move-in and traditions where you have nothing to do. So they just give you some tickets to use in that time so you're not bored. Okay, the next question is, does the DCP accept all kinds of students? So we had some people asking if they would be able to do the DCP with their specific major. And the answer is yes, like no matter what it is. Some colleges might not let you do it or at least might not let you do it as easily, but it doesn't matter what major you are. My major is professional and public writing and she's an elementary education major. So like completely different, doesn't have anything to do with really Disney at all. Mm -hmm. And we had two friends that were literally nursing majors, which completely like yeah, unrelated, so, so. Anyone can do the DCP as long as you're in college and it's not your first semester as a freshman. Next, we had some people asking, how does grocery shopping work? So this one heavily depends on whether or not you take a car. So Lauren and I brought a car with us. We literally just drove to Target to grocery shop. There's a small Target that's pretty expensive. It's like a neighborhood market Target or something like that, literally right across the street. So you can drive there. Um, but then there's also a Target and an Aldi, like within a 10 or 15 minute drive, um, much bigger Target. So you literally just drive and grocery shop. But if you do not bring a car, you have a few options. So first, as I was saying, there's a little Target that's right across the street from West. So you can literally just walk across the street, bring a cart with you. And Flamingo actually um, even offers carts, free carts that you can rent. You just have to give them your ID and then give it to you for free. And then when you return it, you get your ID back. Um, so a lot of people would do that, just walk across the street. Or if you're at East, you could take a bus to West and walk across the street. Alternatively, I knew a few people that would just take Ubers to go to Walmart or Target or Aldi or whatever. It's expensive, but it is gonna be convenient. And then last but not least, um, Flamingo also has a bus that goes to the farther away Target and the Walmart, but that one does only run on certain days. I don't know the specifics on that because we never did it, but it is a longer route. It goes to Cast Connection, Target, Walmart. I don't know if it goes anywhere else, but you can also do that. Okay, so the next question is, were our perceptions of the parks changed after working here? So surprisingly, actually, the answer is yes. I wouldn't have expected to change opinions about the parks, but before I started working at Disney, my favorite park was Animal Kingdom. But actually, now that I've left, my favorite park is Magic Kingdom, which I was always one of those people that was like, I like Magic Kingdom, but there's not that much to do. And I mean, that's true, but after working there, I just like, feel so connected to it and like I could spend my whole day just sitting in Cosmic Rays. 
I'm gonna agree with that. So for me, going down there, my favorite park was Hollywood Studios. That's where I ended up working at. And I'm gonna say that, I don't know if I would say that's my favorite park anymore, just because I spent so much time there. Whenever I first got down to Florida, I like spent all my first solo days there because I was so obsessed with it. Then I got you know, kind of tired of it, you know? And I'm also gonna piggyback off of what she said about Magic Kingdom. I'll say going down there, I was a huge Magic Kingdom hater, sorry. But I was just like, there's not much to do with it. It's like more of the little kitty rides, I don't really care. But now I love Magic Kingdom. I've learned that just walking around and seeing everything there is to see and like the vibes there and walking down Main Street and stuff is just so much fun. It's being at the DCP, you're able to experience it in a different way. On vacation, go, 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 go. You're doing all this stuff. You wanna make sure to hit every ride. But being down there for an extended period of time, I was able to slowly go through everything and do the less exciting things and just walk around. I don't know what I would say my favorite park is now though. Whenever I would do solo park days, I really wouldn't ride any rides, which mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of people who wouldn't agree with that. But for me, I would just walk around get a sweet treat, walk around, get another sweet treat. <laughs> and that I think was very fun in Magic Kingdom. I mean, obviously that would be fun anywhere, but. I would say it is more fun in Magic Kingdom though. Especially the Aurora Cone, that has my heart. This leads right into our next question, which is what are our favorite parks and resorts? So I guess we kind of answered that with the last one. We can do our order of the parks generally. Me ranking the parks is so difficult because it's like every time I think of a park, I'm just like, wait, but that one's good too. But I think right now, just because of the DCP, I have to put Magic Kingdom first because I can't put anything first that doesn't have Tomorrowland. Um, so between Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, I have a really hard time choosing because I love the art experience and I love all the trees and the animals in Animal Kingdom, obviously. But I actually think the order I'm gonna have to go is Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Epcot. We're, the first three are kind of tied and then Epcot's over there. Okay, so I know that in the last question I said that my favorite park is Hollywood Studios and it's probably not anymore, but I'm gonna change that answer. I do think Hollywood Studios <laughs> is still my favorite park. Yes, I did get a little bored of it, but thinking back now, I feel like if I was gonna go to Disney and only do one day, I'd probably spend it there. Um, Magic Kingdom is a very, very, very close second. Next, Animal Kingdom. I love Animal Kingdom so much, but there's not as much to do there. And then Epcot, unfortunately, is last. I usually hate when people put Epcot last, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do that as well. As for resorts, we're not resorts girlies at sorry, all. Sorry, guys. It's just... Really, there's nothing to do there. All you do is just walk around and look at things that aren't that interesting. I'm gonna say there are a few positives about resorts. For instance, at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, we went there one time. Obviously, there's like pretty animals in the savannah that we looked at, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that great. Yeah, and there weren't that many animals. It was really hot. The sun was yeah. in our eyes and Animal Kingdom has more animals anyway. So. Right. Go ride Kilimanjaro safaris and you get the a better experience, honestly. Oh. I like the boardwalk, but still, I would rather be walking around water somewhere. I else. love the boardwalk and the hotels there are really gorgeous. But if I'm at the boardwalk, honestly, I don't even care to go in the hotels. I will also add that the Grand Floridian is gorgeous. And I did go there when they had like their Easter display on and that was really pretty. And we've in the past gone there for the gingerbread display, which was very, very, very cool. So with all that being said, I'm gonna say if I had to choose a favorite resort, either the Grand Floridian because of the fun seasonal displays or whenever we went back in November, we stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter and they have really delicious beignets there. So I would say that one's also pretty good. I would also say Port Orleans is probably my favorite resort. That resort is just really pretty to walk around. It looks like a city, a tiny little city. And they even have a horse-drawn carriage that comes around. Yeah, that one is probably the prettiest to me. Um, other than that, I would probably say the boardwalk because I had a really good time with my friends there. So the next question is, do we have any major regrets? 
Yeah, we, we have some regrets. Um, some of them we couldn't really control, like Rock and Roller Coaster wasn't open, so like I regret that I didn't get to ride that, but obviously couldn't control that. And there were a lot of cast exclusive events that we didn't get to do. There were behind the scenes tours mm -hmm. and stuff, but they would fill up before, like most of the ones during our program were filled up before we even got there. My biggest regret that we couldn't control was not getting the cast preview of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. That broke our hearts because literally we left May 30th and the first cast previews were like the days at like- I wanna say it was June 2nd or June, June 3rd. June 2nd, I think. So we missed it. <gasps> we were I so wrong. And we could have, we would have extended to go there, honestly. As we mentioned previously, we did a short-term extension which is where you can extend either one week, two week, three weeks, or four weeks past your original arrival date. And we did two because we both had weddings to go to the first week of June. But if we didn't have those weddings, we would have done four weeks and we would have been there. Ugh. Literally our biggest dream going during this time was riding that ride. There was only one cast preview during the time we were down there, which was for the Disney Springs light show which we actually did sign up to watch because it was right before we left, but we both slept through it because it was gonna be like at four or 5 a.m. Yeah, uh, which means taking the bus even earlier or driving yeah. even earlier. Right. We didn't have it in us. <laughs> we had a lot going on. Yeah, that was the morning after I had just done my four parks in one day where I got to the parks at like 8 a.m and then didn't get home until like 11.30 p.m. So I was exhausted. We slept through it, unfortunately. I don't really regret missing that though. I was yeah. tired. I, there was too much going on. So one more thing that we really, really, really regret is not visiting Universal while we were down there because first of all, you get a Florida resident discount. So it would have been cheaper. Which not that much cheaper. Yeah. Keep in mind, it's, it's still gonna be a couple hundred dollars mm -hmm. per ticket, so. Yeah, I want to say it was literally going to be 179 I think, for a one-day, one-park ticket, which is insane. So we never did that just because of money reasons. We couldn't justify spending $200 for one Universal day. And also, if you're going to want to go with literally any friends, it's going to be virtually impossible because our off days rarely mm -hmm. aligned. And yeah. it would have just been hard to find a time to do it. We still really regretted not going yeah. out, and I wish we had. Okay, so another one of my regrets, it isn't a major regret, but I think had I been doing the DCP again, I would do it differently. I really wanted one of the like Disney degrees, I guess. There's a few different degrees you can get by completing classes through Flamingo, and I was on the road to get my master's, which a master's is basically just completing a multi-week series. I had been taking classes for a certain series, the first couple months of my program. And then I was looking throughout the remainder of our program and realized that they weren't even offering all of them the time that I was down there. So I quit visiting them. Then we did our two week extension and the other two that I needed would have been during those two weeks. So I could have gotten it if I would have just went to the other ones, but at that point it was too late. So I do regret not taking those classes so I could get my masters. Not that much, it's not that big of a deal, but I think it would have definitely been cool to have the little certificate. And then another minor regret of mine is that they had a little event at Flamingo where you could meet the author of the Kingdom Keeper series. And I had no idea this was going on, so I missed it. And then I was walking through the breezeway on my way to work and I saw everyone leaving with their autographs and everyone was so excited. Come to find out it was him. And I was so devastated because I love that book series. Our next question is, what are our post-college plans? For me, I graduate in 2026 with my degree in elementary education, so I'm probably just going to jump straight into teaching that following August if I can get a job, and the rest is history. I literally have no idea what I'm doing in any sense of the word. I plan on being a technical writer. Do I want to? No, I'd rather not have a job, but that's the current plan. If I can, I'll do the DCP again. Not sure about that. Honestly, not sure at all what's going to be happening. I graduate in less than a year. 
I'll figure it out and get back to you. So the next question is, is there anything that we never expected to experience? So the answer to this is yes. There are probably a million tiny things that we can't think of. One of the things that we really didn't expect to do, which we've talked about this before, is make friends. We, no lie, 100% expected to make maybe one friend with our roommate, or I guess two friends, we thought we would have two roommates. That's a different story. But we thought maybe we'd be friends with our roommates and we thought no one else that ever. Was the we were just, it was Hannah and me against the world. We even discussed before going down there the fact that like our Disney University pictures was just gonna be us two or maybe hopefully our roommate if we ended up becoming friends with them. And then literally we have like a whole group picture That's of so a bunch of people. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram to see what I've posted about Disney. There are a lot of little fun things that I experienced just being backstage at work, seeing really cool things. Obviously I can't get into that. Meeting really cool people. I never expected to actually enjoy my job. And I really, really did because I got quick service food and beverage, which first of all, everyone says is terrible. I can't say it's not terrible, but there are a lot more pros than I would have expected. And also I have really, really bad anxiety. Working in restaurants before has been a nightmare for my anxiety, but I'll actually say working at Disney, this is the best job I've ever had. It's so well organized and they've got it running as such a machine that there's not as much unexpected. You know exactly what you're doing when you get there. You know everything I made a million friends at my job, which was actually amazing and I was not expecting at all. So that's another thing to remember. I will also say that we never expected to do the DCP period. Yeah, that's very true. It's always been a dream of ours since we were in like middle school when we first heard about it. Actually following through with doing it was a huge unexpected experience, which was so much fun. And we literally would not trade that for the world. It was an incredible experience. Okay, our next question is, what do we wish we did differently in our roles? I wish that I wasn't so hard on myself. I am such a stressed out person. And if I would make any slight minor mistake, I would just beat myself up about it so much. I was constantly scared about people not liking me and about everyone's gonna think I'm terrible at my job. Everyone's gonna think I don't know what I do. I was just so overly stressed about it. And at the end of the day, it's just a job. I'm not gonna say that you shouldn't care at all, but it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to mess up, especially at the very beginning, ask the questions. I was so scared of asking questions because I thought I was being annoying and I was just so scared to talk to anyone. But later on in my program, new CPs would come in and them asking questions would not bother me at all. Like at all. I, I was, loved answering questions. Right. I'd be like, yeah, they think I'm smart. Okay. Exactly. I was happy to answer questions and I would go out of my way to show them stuff just in case they did have questions because I remember what it was like being in their shoes. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be hard on yourself and please just ask questions. No one's gonna care about you asking questions. I do have a story, maybe if anyone wants to hear this, I'll talk about it, of where I asked a question and I regret asking it because I ended up crying mess. But yeah. other than that, I, I also asked a lot of questions. From the very beginning, I don't know what came over me, but I asked a lot of questions and that was a great idea because going around not knowing how to do something is a lot more embarrassing than just asking how Especially to do something. Especially if you ask at the beginning, like within your first like two to three weeks, they're expecting you to not know how to do everything, ask your questions then, because asking a question three months down the line because you kept pushing off learning how to do something is a lot more embarrassing. Yeah, I will say there's some people, I only really encountered one really rude person during my program in my work environment, and she made me cry a lot. I would go into the bathroom frequently to cry. Luckily, she ended up moving to a different location, so I didn't have to deal with that forever. It was also my trainer. If you're watching this, so sorry, but you made me cry all the time. Actually, I'm not saying sorry about that because you were mean. So I never ask her questions, obviously, and but that kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying about not beating yourself up. She was mean to me if I made even the littlest mistake. She made me feel really stupid. Okay, that's enough about that, but yeah. I would come home from work feeling so bad about myself and I regret that because at the end of the day, the stuff I was doing was not that serious. You're supposed to make mistakes in training and they're supposed to help you. So if someone's being mean, do not. 
listen to them during training. Obviously there's certain bounds to that, but in general, they're being mean for no reason. Don't beat yourself up about it. Yeah, I would definitely say training is a big area where I would have done things differently. Not with how hard I worked, but I was very worried about doing everything right and immediately knowing how to do everything. And I really don't think that I should have cared that much not about what I was doing, but I shouldn't have been so anxious when I couldn't figure something out immediately. So one thing I guess that I wish I had done differently was not cried so much, which you could take that in a couple different ways. First of all, just the amount I cried was embarrassing. I'm a little crybaby. I had good reason to cry every time, but I wish I had just like held it together somehow. I guess I wish that I hadn't taken everything so to heart. Okay, and the next question is, do you have any advice for difficult guests? Hannah can't really answer it because I was a fully backstage role. I never talked to a guest, literally ever. My best advice for dealing with difficult guests is kind of just don't take what they're saying to heart. It's going to feel horrible and I can't tell you not to feel that because when someone's yelling at you it's not fun but I really think my biggest piece of advice is to just be nice to them anyway that confuses anyone yelling at you if you're just like yeah I'm so sorry um blah blah, blah. I just always go with the sorry always just take responsibility for whatever it is no matter what because if you try to start fighting back then it just becomes a bigger collision at Cosmic Rays we had to be nice to everyone and kind of give you what you want. The guest so, is always right. Yeah, obviously. exactly. The guest is always right. And it's hard sometimes when someone's being completely irrational. That's my best advice. Vacationers are a full different breed of people. People are not rational when they're hot and hungry and have been doing park open and park close for the past five days, so. And even when you're thinking, I've been doing that same thing, working 12 hour shifts five days in a row, and I've been out in the heat. Just breathe, kill them with kindness. Okay, so our next question is basically just asking about pin trading as a whole, how it works, how to do it, ins and outs. So over the course of our program, pin trading did officially come back to the park, and I am a big pin collector, obviously. I love pin trading. So this is just a little fun fact for you guys as college programmers. There are Facebook groups for pin trading at Flamingo and just for cast members as a whole. I was a part of them. Just look up on Facebook, Flamingo Crossings Village pin trading, whatever. A lot of people are selling valuable pins, trading pins. That's how I got several of mine, um, which is really fun. So that's just a fun little um, tip there. But Lauren can talk about doing it officially through Disney as a cast member. So basically as a cast member, you don't get to use your own pins. You don't pick out what you trade, at least at Cosmic Rays. I don't think it's the same at every location. We had some little like satchel type things and we just had like eight to 10 of those sitting in our back room. When you get assigned a position where your whole job is to deal with guests like concierge or door greeter, you are either gonna go pick up one of the pin satchel things we have in the back and put it on for the duration of that position or someone else that had that position before you already has a pin lanyard and you just take that from them. Never are you taking it home or bringing it back with you. It's just like always there. A guest will come up to you, you let them trade one pin and that's how it goes. Our next question is, do you have any advice for taking classes during your program? So this is another one that Lauren's gonna be the only one qualified to answer this because I did not take any classes, so Lauren has the floor for this entire question. So during my program, I took two classes online from my university. Both of them started in May, so we left in May. I didn't have a whole lot of time doing classes while I was there, but I did get a little taste of the experience. I'm gonna go right out and say that I do not at all recommend doing classes during your program. Maybe one class where it's one of those ones where you just have one discussion post a week or something. But if you're taking like a class where you're actually gonna have to be active in it or multiple, multiple classes, like even for me, two classes was 
crazy during my program. I was taking a Spanish class and we had exams that were assigned for specific days and we could only take it during 12 a.m. to 10 p.m. I would work like 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. one day and the next day I worked 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. In that example, I could only take my exam after I got home from a 12 hour shift or before I left for a 12 hour shift. It was possible, I woke up at seven in the morning and took my exam before my shift. But in situations like that, especially if you're gonna have to do that throughout your whole program for different classes, it is really difficult. A lot of people will say, well, is it possible if I have to? If you have to, yes, it is possible. A lot of people have done it. They've hated their programs when they've done it and you're gonna have a lot less free time if you do it and in my opinion, unless it's the only way you can do it, I don't really recommend it. It's gonna make it to where you won't enjoy your program as much as if you just waited until you graduated college or figured out a way to take a semester off. So yeah, that was really long-winded, but my advice is either don't do it or I guess just have really good time management, but even sometimes that doesn't help. So our next question is a really fun one. It is, what was our favorite part from our DCP? We had way too many to just choose one. I have a short list here. So my first favorite moment that I can remember from my DCP was the first day that we met all of our friends. Those three days that we get park tickets in between move-in and traditions. Honestly, that entire three days just grouped together was like a continuous favorite moment. It was so much fun. And one of my favorite moments was during my training. It's kind of a rite of passage if you work at Cosmic Rays to go backstage and watch the fireworks and to stand right next to the building where Tinkerbell lands after she flies down. Just getting to see the fireworks for the first time, first time backstage like that, really cool experience. I'm in a group a couple together now, but they were while I was at work. So one night I was working in closing shift and we, everyone that was closing that night had the opportunity to go do like an exclusive meet and greet with Sweetums, which if you guys know who Sweetums is, he is the big fluffy Muppet guy that runs out across the stage looking for the rabbit during the um, Muppet 3D vision show. So it's not a meetable character, but they coordinated it to where we could go meet him. Here's a picture of me meeting him. It was absolutely wonderful. It was so much fun. And then kind of related to that, we, on my very last day of working, I was allowed to go to Fantasmic and see the behind the scenes of that. Four of us went and we just got to go walk around behind the scenes and see everything. And it was just so much fun. Another one of my favorite things that I did was working over at the Sunset Ranch Market in Hollywood Studios. Basically one of my leaders was like, they need people over there. A couple of my friends and I signed up and the very next day we were working in Hollywood Studios. It wasn't the most fun experience actually working there. It, it was just a little stressful learning things that quickly. I was really happy to finally be able to get a new position because people who work at Cosmic Grace usually can't work at other locations that much because of the fact that we're not alcohol trained. So it was really cool to be able to work somewhere else and see myself in a new costume. I can show you my little sunset ranch costume. And so then my final big moment, I guess, was on my last day of work, Lauren and I both worked the same day as our last days, but Lauren actually started like an hour or two before me. So before I went into work, I went with her to Magic Kingdom. I actually went in with Lauren to the tunnels and got to see like her break room and got to walk around underneath Magic Kingdom and just see that one time since I never worked there. And it was so much fun. And that was just such like a unique experience that I'm probably gonna remember forever. But that kind of goes hand in hand with Lauren working in Hollywood Studios because we both got to see the behind the scenes of each other's it was really home park. Cool, yeah. I would recommend if you can try to somehow see what the other parks look like. And my next one is just hanging out with my friends in general. That's such a broad thing to say, but I can't just pick one day, like going to the parks with my different friends on different days or just goofing off at work or working at work. Just getting to talk to your friends in between leaders making their rounds or whatever is just super fun. I made such good friends, like I can't even count how many friends I made on my program. I've never been able to make so many friends like that and hang out with them. So that was, that's like my favorite thing overall, very generally. I'll agree with that as well. One of my favorite friend memories specifically 
would be one time Lauren and I had gone to Epcot with Amari and Caitlin and Amari had never ridden Cosmic Rewind before and we rode it with her for the first time ever. And we were all hoping for September because that's the best song. Sorry, that should be objective. And we got off the ride, we'd gotten September and we all literally started screaming and it was so much fun. I remember that specifically as probably my favorite memory with like our friend group together. And my last thing that I wanted to say, getting to hear the fireworks every night. I'm not a big fireworks person, but just hearing them almost five times a week, just like kind of built into my head good memories and like me and my friends would sing and if we weren't doing anything too crucial, we could walk outside and watch them from Cosmics. Every time I heard that boom, it was so nice and so fun. And I have good memories just ingrained in me from hearing that now. And our last question, do we like the DCP? Would we recommend it? And will we be doing it again? Did we like our DCP? Short answer, yes. Absolutely. We loved it. it my was, favorite experience of my life. Yeah, really. I was gonna say it was a great experience. There were a lot of hard moments. I literally said in this video, that I was crying constantly at work, which is true. So there were times where I would have said, no, I don't like this, this is terrible. But overall, the DCP was so amazing. And will, would I recommend it? Absolutely. If you're even slightly considering it, I'd say at least ramp up your consideration. I know there are a lot of things to consider, but if you have the means and the time and everything. I say go for it. It was so amazing, so much better than I thought it was gonna be. Hopefully one day we'll make a video going more in detail about this question as just a full video because there's so much we could say on it. But yes, I would also recommend it personally, even though I didn't, I had a very different experience than Lauren just because I had a lot less great of an experience in my role than she did. But even I would still recommend it. It was a great learning experience, great growing experience. It taught me how to work full time and the experience of being able to go to the parks all the time and the friends that I made, it was just a wonderful experience overall. Leading into, will I be doing it again? Probably not. Would I be doing it again if I could? Probably yes. I can't really do it at this point because as an education major, I'm about to start entering into my actual teaching stuff. And so for the last two years of college, I can't take another gap. And then like I said, I graduate in May, I'll be going straight into teaching. So there wouldn't really be an opportunity for me to do it aside from potentially the alumni program. It's a summer program that's just like May through July, I think. I would definitely consider doing that. I would have to look on the specifics and it's also a lot more hard to get into that, but Overall, yes, I would do it again, but sadly, I cannot. I am more leaning towards I'll do it again. I can't say 100% that I will just because, first of all, I'm terrified to go without Hannah. Even just sharing her <laughs> with Rando kind of scares me. Also, I'm really, like I said earlier, not sure what my plans are after I graduate. If I can find a job right after I graduate or an internship, probably won't have the chance to do it again. But my plans are a lot more open-ended. If I can figure out a way to do it without being terrified, then I would absolutely love to do the DCP again. And I hope that I do because it was so fun. Maybe it won't be as fun the second time, who knows? But hopefully, maybe, we'll see. And that officially wraps up our video. Hopefully this was able to answer a lot of y'all's questions that you had. If there are any other questions you have, just comment them, we'll answer them in the comments or I guess if we get enough, we can make a part two. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed. We will be back soon with a new video. Thank y'all for watching. Bye. Not getting to ride tight. Tiny. tiny. <laughs> <laughs> we get kidnapped live on camera. Getting kidnapped in 4K. I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Come on. Like some basic. I don't even know. So as a. <laughs> Why would I say this is let or for some colleges it, <laughs> for some for some cards <laughs> and that's all I need to say about that. <laughs> um, one thing that I wish I did differently was actually beat up my leadership. <laughs> oh, why am I so stupid? I was, but I don't, I don't know how you.
But, you know, just... <laughs>